live. Good morning. Hi, Antonio. Hey, Don. How are you today? I'm good. I'm up and I'm ready and I'm excited. I know. It's like early by you, right? It's 8 a.m. there? 8 a.m., yeah. 8 a.m. <laughs> Coming at you guys with some education bright and early out here in the west on the west coast. I know that's perfect. Like everybody's like laying in bed ready to get up and get in the shower, but they can get a little education before they head off to the salon today. So yeah. So hey guys, I'm Dawn Atkinson, visionary team member with Sexy Hair. And I'm here with my amazing partner, Antonio Estrada. And first I want to say thank you to Behind the Chair and Sexy Hair for having us on this morning, bright and early. And we're gonna be talking shags today, right, Antonio? That's right, yeah, like Don was saying, my name is Antonio Estrada, I'm also on the visionary team with Don, and I'm really excited about this live because I normally do just more like long hair, and I really love styling short hair, and I'm excited to show you guys some tips and tricks to make your life easier behind the chair, right? That's what it's all about. Yeah, I love that. So, um, you guys, we're going to be together for the next maybe 30, 45 minutes. And um, I encourage you guys to put your comments in the chat box, share anything that you, any questions that you have, any comments that you may have. We have um, Stephanie there. She'll be moderating all of our questions, but we'll try to keep, um, keep watching and make sure that we answer any questions that you have. But again, yes, we are talking shags today. I think the shag haircut, if you agree, Antonio, has been probably the hottest haircut of 2021. Would you agree? <laughs> I've watched you cut it, I would say a thousand times. <laughs> I feel like I've cut it a thousand times, but um, yeah, so the shag's been really fun. I love the modern take on the shag. Um, the great thing about the shag is it's perfect for all face shapes. It looks beautiful on all face shapes. It's a really wearable, sellable haircut in the salon. And um, I'm gonna be showcasing how to cut the shag. So when I um, started to come up with like step by steps to creating the shag, I wanted something really easy to achieve behind the chair really quick. Um, but we'll talk about some tips and tricks how you can customize it depending on the client's individual hair characteristics. So I actually have um, my pre-done shag right here, which is just, you know, that really beautiful lived in textured shag. This is like the classic blowout with a little bit of enhancing of the flat iron waves. And then Antonio is going to kind of show you how because he's always so extra. He's going to show you <laughs> really fun um, ways to amp up that modern shag with some styling. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my wet down doll head and start the sectioning. And yeah, like talk to me, Antonio, tell me yep. I'm so excited that you're doing a shag style today. I know, so like it's really it's really cool that we're doing this because I love the idea of you cutting while I'm showing the styling part, right? I think that's really nice. And I think, you know, for me being behind the chair and the first two years of my career, I was really focused on just building a clientele and getting really busy. And I feel the reason why I got busy so quick was because the finishing of each client, I made everyone look so beautiful and so glam and made them feel like a million dollars walking out the door, right? So you wanna be able to give them styles that they, they can produce at home, but obviously really, really done, so they just feel really good. Absolutely, so, I love yeah. that. I think the styling is really everything, right? Cause like we can give them the most beautiful haircut but if we don't really show them how to achieve these beautiful styles, then what are we really doing, right? We're just giving them a beautiful haircut. So I love that. Yeah, and then another great thing about this shag is, you know, it's gonna be something that could be worn with, you know, if they have a natural texture, right? I always love whenever women that have maybe a little wave in their hair or a curl, they kind of have this cut, because they can just set it and they just kind of let it air dry and it's just like so beautiful and lays so nice, right? Yeah, and I think going into summer, like that's, I love that too, because it's great to have a haircut that, you know, if you want to kind of let air dry and go, you could, it's still going to be really, really beautiful, especially if you have that um, natural texture or curly hair or really any natural texture to the, to the hair. So um, I'm just going to show you real quickly how I do the sectioning on this. Oftentimes people say, well, do you really section before you do a haircut? And I always say, absolutely. I think that sectioning, pre-sectioning a haircut is so important because not only does it give you the ability to, uh, you know, kind of consult and really look at and evaluate the natural head shape, 
but also um, it gives you that roadmap, right? That you can always make sure that you have consistent results every time you give a haircut. It's like that, you know, puzzle piece that we put together every time. And we know that it's going to be perfect for her individual head shape because the sectioning is based on her head shape. So I'm going to start by um, sectioning off her fringe. Now, the entire haircut is going to be created with a center part. But if the client has a side part, then you would absolutely start with the side part first and then create the fringe. But today I'm doing it with a center part. So to create my first curtain fringe of the haircut, I am going to section off the fringe and find the natural fringe within any um, head shape. You're going to place the comb right up to the hairline. So I'm gonna get a little bit closer for you guys, right up to the hairline. And where the comb leaves off the head shape, right there past the hairline. So we've got the edge of the comb at the front and uh, forehead. And then where the comb leaves off the head shape, that's going to be the apex. And then we're going to go to the corner of each eye. So that's going to be her natural fringe. And I'll do that on both sides. Yeah, and what I'm doing over here is I'm actually going to show you guys what to do like on day two of your shag or what to tell your clients on day two after they sleep and they need to refresh and kind of zhuzh it up. <clears throat> so what I'm doing is I'm using the cutting edge, which is a primer. I always love to use something like a primer to re-wet the hair rather than just water because a primer is going to have that moisture and it. it's going to have the amino acid, which is going to keep your hair really healthy. But what I like to do is I like to... <clears throat> The cutting edge, I like to um, cocktail it with construct, like one spray, because it's gonna give you a lot of hold and a lot of bend. And I like to add these two right in the bang area, right before I blow dry. So let me show you guys real quick. Cause you know, down in the morning, sometimes when you wake up, your hair is like a little wild, right? Yes, very much like, so. <laughs> I feel like the only way to kind of get it calmed down is to re-wet it, right? And just kind of get that cuticle laying down and get it nice and shiny again. <clears throat> so, I re wet that and then I start to blow dry with my round brush. And this is this is like the cool thing about this haircut is I, I blow dry the front the same way Dawn sections the cutting of the front, if that makes sense. So when you guys see her sectioning the front part, it's the same way that I'm blow drying. So I'm gonna blow dry the opposite way. And I love that you're sharing that, Antonio, because um, I think oftentimes we create a haircut, right? And we we have this sectioning and we think about the end result that we have in mind. Um, and then we go through after we blow out, if we just blow dry like at natural fall and just let it let it be and not really think about the rhyme or reason as to the end result that we're looking for. So if you if you do the blowout mimicking the actual direction of the haircut that you're creating, you're going to get really beautiful natural results. So you're not fighting against that direction that you created within your haircut. So think about a shag. We want that like long and lean, short to long in the back. Um, and the direction is very much shorter in the back that curtain fringe that kind of wings out to the side and then draping off into the back nape. So I always think about when I'm doing my finishing to mimic the direction that I created the haircut as well. That's always helped me behind the chair too when I'm kind of like stuck, like how am I gonna blow dry this part? I'm like, well, how did I section it? How did I cut it? And then that's exactly how I'm gonna, you know, do it. This is actually how I'm gonna blow it out. But I wanted to talk about one more crucial tool that I think you need with anyone that's using a, or having a shag, are these little clips right here. <clears throat> these are just setting clips that I love um, for styling on set or any, anything that you want the hair to you know, be set and stay in place. So after I blow out the bang, what I would do is I would set it exactly where I want it to stay, just like that, and just let it live there. Just let it live right there so it'll stay and just be set right in these areas. You want to use these setting clips because if you use a regular clip, you can leave a little indent in the hair and no one wants that. So, totally. right there. I love there. that. Just let it live, right? <laughs> let it live there, yeah. Okay, so before I get started, I've you know, taken those extra few minutes to pre-section my doll head. So I did my curtain fringe section, okay, with her natural 
fringe, and then subdivided front from back at the top of the head shape. Always where you can find the natural top of the head shape is just placing the comb horizontal on the top of the head. Where that hair leaves off in the center of your comb, that's going to be the top of the head to just behind the ears. And then you'll see that I did a, I guess you would call this like an upside down teardrop shape. These are going to be her crown layers, and this is the internal part of her haircut. So again, your sectioning equals direction, right? So if I have this diagonal back section, think about it, I'm having that diagonal back direction in her shag. So this is going to be her surface layers in her shag, and then everything underneath is going to be the internal structure foundation of her shag haircut. Now, keeping in mind, if the client has very thin, fine hair, and I need to make sure that I don't take away a lot of the integrity of the internal part or foundation of her shag, then I would come up a little bit higher with my V shape here so that I keep that weight and density through that nape area, and I don't collapse it so much that it looks like she needs a haircut, right? Because it's too thin and airy. And if she has really thick coarse hair where I want to remove a lot of extra hair, then I can go even deeper with my V-shape parting. That's just something to keep in mind when you're doing your sectioning and you're doing your consultation is thinking about the characteristics of the hair that you're working on. Yeah, then what I did right here is that what I'm doing is I'm setting the hair. I want like a really, really bouncy finish. I feel like that's really in right now. And I just want it to be like big and beautiful. So before I, while I'm setting, what I'm doing is I'm using the Avant Guard, which is the heat protection hairspray. It protects up to 450 degrees of heat, which I think is amazing. Right, Don? Yes, absolutely. That's probably like the easiest product um, in the salon that I've had to ever, ever in my life retail. Like, would you agree with that? Like, it's easily, like, so perfect because it's like that three-in-one setting spray um, with thermal protection spray and then your working spray and finishing spray all in one. So, yeah, so I mean, let's be real. How many people curl their hair in the salon? How many hot tools? I use it on every client. So it's really nice to have a guaranteed 450 degrees heat protection because some products, what they'll say is heat protection on them, but it doesn't give you an actual number. So it could be just protecting up to 100 you know, 100 degrees. So it's really nice to have that 450 degrees guarantee protection. And I'm using it on um, each section as I curl. I'm using a one and a half curling iron right here, a pretty big one, because I want to just have like a bouncy finish. And then what I'm doing is I'm setting it with a Velcro roller. These are a great tool for anyone that has this haircut or wants like this finish style. Also like a hot roller would be really good as well. So as I said this, I'm gonna start pulling out the ones that have pulled down and kind of show you guys how the end result is. Love it. Okay, so let's get started on our haircut. So we're gonna start with our curtain fringe here. And how many people have come into the salon and they're like, oh, I want those TikTok bangs. Everybody calls it the TikTok bangs. It's like, the curtain fringe was here before TikTok. I promise you that. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, this for me has been like my go-to, honestly, for every single client that asks for the curtain fringe. And so what I'm gonna do is take her natural part and just part it right down the center. And this is fun because I can really customize her curtain fringe depending on the amount of elevation within the hair. So when I actually elevate this curtain fringe up higher, I'm going to get a lot more texture, a lot more layers within my curtain fringe. So think about it. Like 10 years ago, everybody wanted the swooping bang, right? But it was very heavy. It wasn't soft and airy. It was more like that swooping over and heavy on the forehead. Because we want softness in our curtain fringe, a lot more texture and airiness, I'm going to elevate the hair a little bit higher so that when that hair releases after I've cut it, I get that really beautiful, soft, airy texture on the perimeter of her fringe. So with each side of my fringe, I'm gonna laterally direct to the opposite side. I am using a feather razor when I'm doing this haircut, but you can use your shears as well, and I'll show you both ways when you're going through your shag. We want that really lived in, airy, textured feel to our modern shags, that's why I prefer the razor. But if you're more comfortable with using um, your shear, then you can absolutely do that. So I'm gonna laterally direct to the opposite side of where the bangs live. So this is her left side and I'm laterally directing it over to the right. 
my fingers are parallel to the part line, elevating for softness. I'm coming in with my razor and just doing an in and out movement. And as I come towards the corner of her fringe, I'm dropping the elevation so that I don't get too thin right here on the outside corners of the eye. And this is gonna give me that really beautiful curtain shape that drapes over to her side profile. So I'll do the same on the opposite side and then I can show you a shorter version with the shears so you guys get a feel if you're more comfortable with shears. And I think one thing I wanna like just take my hat off to you, Dawn, is like you made this haircut really, really straightforward and easy to do because I was supposed to get two mannequins from Dawn to style and they didn't get here in time and I actually had to cut one and I felt really confident after watching her tutorial. So just know if you guys are feeling like, ooh, I don't know, that's a lot of hair to cut off or a little insecure about it, she really makes it user friendly, right Dawn? I feel like that's like the big, the big thing with this haircut. Hey, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think that, you know, haircutting shouldn't be complicated. It should be fun, it should be easy. Yes, yes. That's um, and quick, like I don't want to be in the salon doing 45 minute haircuts. I want to be able to do a 20 minute haircut based on an individual head shape and get really beautiful, predictable results every time. So this whole haircut is based on that front curtain fringe. So what's wonderful is once I've created that beautiful framing in her face, then the rest of the haircut is based on that fringe. So you just follow your fringe as your guideline as you move through the rest of the haircut. And it's just gonna be wrapping around the round of her head shape. So you're gonna get these really beautiful seamless layers. So thank you Antonio for saying that. We were laughing this morning because our <laughs> that I sent him are stuck in New Mexico right now. I hope they're having fun, but I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I was a little freaked out, but then I was like, I watched the video and I'm like, I can do this. I got this. Yeah, so we talked a little bit earlier about how I'm going up the bangs the same way that John cut them, just to kind of give you guys that really nice curtain fringe. I personally liked mine a little longer. That's why these are a little longer right here. But again, like Don said, you can do them a little shorter where they have like the pieciness be here. But I did want to mention when you are styling, you still want to keep the idea of what you're, you want the hair to do. Um, you want to go in that direction. So for example, I set everything on this side going back because I want it to kind of have like this flippy kind of feeling like this, you know, so you want to make sure when you're styling, you're still thinking about the end result. So as you can see, I have these two wrapped backwards and down here, I only had them wrapped upside like this, right? So just always kind of keep in mind, if you want everything to flow back, then you're going to curl backwards. Love that. So I want to show you just how to use your sheer when you're doing your curtain fringe or actually the rest of the haircut. Again, guys, like I'm not a right or wrong person. I'm really like what works for you. So if you're super comfortable using the sheer rather than the razor, then go for it. I always say stretch yourself a little bit. Try something new. So I encourage you to try uh, the razor just to get a different feel if you're more comfortable with the sheer. But absolutely, if you guys want to attack this with a sheer rather than a razor, I'm just gonna do the exact same thing, coming in, elevating the hair for softness, fingers parallel to the part line still, but you'll notice that I'm going to be using my shear between the hand and the head shape here. And what this does is gives me the ability to create texture within my curtain fringe as I move through the section. So I'm just opening and closing my shear as I move through that section. So I'm still getting that textured airy feel, but a little bit more deliberate of a movement with my shear, right? Because this still gives me the opportunity, if I want like a super chunky texture, I can open and close my shear really strongly as I move through that section. And if I want something very soft, then I would just create small notches as I move through. And the same thing with the razor that you can do to create that customized texture is if you want really soft texture, then you're going to come in with really small movements with your razor. If you want more exaggerated texture, then you're going to do it like an in and out movement that's much more exaggerated. So that's where you really get the ability to customize. So I'll do the same thing on the opposite side, and then we'll continue on to the side profiles. Look at this. This is so gorgeous. Look at that shine. She looks so good already. She's not even completely done. <laughs> I feel like it's really cool to like, even if you're going to have this haircut and maybe you're not the best, or maybe if you have clients that are, you know, really want this haircut, but they're like not that good with, 
you know, a round brush and a blow dry. You know, we have those clients, right, Don? Yes, the ones we do. that they want the craziest things, but they're not really good at styling at home. You know, they're out there. So just know that this is a good option for them to kind of just power dry everything, blow dry their bangs down, and then just set everything because you still get a really beautiful finish, just like this. She looks so good. Like <laughs> I wish I looked that good at eight thirty in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm kind of surprised. Like, I'm like, oh my god, I hope this comes out good. And now I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna give everyone. You look good. <laughs> yeah, great. So I'm still gonna do a little more work, but I just wanted to point that out. Like, you know, there are other ways to get this style rather than just having to work a round brush. Like I said, Valkyrie roll is gonna be really good. You can even do a flat iron, get the head hair hot, and then wrap it in the Valkyrie roller. Or you could just, um, you could just do hot rollers. I feel like that's always a good option. I think that's a tool that a lot of people forget. But you just have to know what your, your end result's gonna be. It's gonna be really bouncy and really flippy, which I think is perfect for this cut. Okay, so I'm moving back through here. I'm moving through the side profiles and then I'll move into the nape area and that'll be the foundation of our modern shag. After I create that, then we'll go in and create those really fun surface layers. As the hair starts to dry, I am um, re-dampening the hair with some of my cutting edge. This is our Artistry Pro Cutting Edge Leave-In. It's a lightweight priming conditioner. And, you know, I always think of this, like, we don't sell water in the salon, right? We sell product. So this product is the most amazing cutting tool I feel in the salon. It extends the life of my razor, so I don't have to worry. I always replace a razor between every haircut because I, I want that really nice, clean, sharp feel. Um, but I want that beautiful glide. So the cutting edge is going to give me that really wonderful glide for my cutting tools and extend the life of my cutting tools. But also really set up my styling for success, right? Because I started with, um, from the get-go, from the shampoo and conditioner, clean palette and base coat conditioner with an Artistry Pro. And then I'm moving in with my cutting edge. Now, one thing I just want to touch on with all of the Artistry Pro products is that they're all infused from the shampoo all the way through to the stylers. They're all infused with amino acid technology. So what that means is that it's moisturizing, it's nourishing, it's replenishing all of the integrity that our hair has lost, right, with color and everything else and just the elements. Um, it's really nourishing from the inside out. So not only inside the cortex, but on the surface of the hair as well. So we're strengthening, we're moisturizing, we're nourishing the hair from the inside out, as well as creating longevity for our hair color, which everybody wants. So um, I myself like absolutely love this lineup. And now we have um, our phase two products, which we'll be using today as well. So you guys definitely today through Saturday, right, Antonio? Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah. Off at Cosmoprof, 20% off. So that's e-com and in-store. And the code is 444698. So definitely if you have not tried Artistry Pro products yet, um, go check it out. And then also get your 20% off on sexy hair at Cosmoprof today through Saturday. Yeah, like right now is the time to try it, right? If you're even thinking about it or, you know, we, I love these products and I think that, you know, a primer is a really good product to have. You need that to detangle. It's kind of better than water. I'm also going to talk about that handcrafted really quick. This is our blow dry serum. This is a two in one product because obviously you could use it before you blow dry, which is really important, but I like to use it on dry hair because it's going to give it a lot of shine and kind of calm down a lot of the hair. So. Whenever I got really good at styling hair, I felt like it's because I understood the products and what they're being used for. So when I first started, everybody was adding texture spray to every updo. So I just thought like, that's what I'm going to do too. But if someone's hair is already so textured, it just makes things worse, right? So if the hair is too textury, if the hair is too frizzy or flyaway, if you use texture, it's going to make it enhanced. So I, I realized that, oh, it needs shine spray. Or if the hair is already too shiny, too silky, that's when you kind of go in with your texture sprays and your dry shampoos. So just like understanding that, I think really elevated the game for me and made me busier quicker. But I'm going to go ahead and use just a little bit of this handcrafted, again, just a little. I'm showing you guys just like, I don't know if you can tell, but it's just very tiny. Put it in my hands. I like to put it all through. And then I'll just go through these ends and just add a little more shine right on the ends and just seal them down. 
Okay, so I'm going to keep on moving through the side profiles and the and the nape. I just did my next section. So what I've taken is vertical subsections as I move through the head shape. I'm laterally directing it straight forward, okay? And I'm using the center of my fringe as my guide. Remember that the entire haircut is based on that fringe that you created from this from the beginning. So I'm using the center of my fringe at the very top as my guide so I get that beautiful short to long feel. Coming in with my razor, lowering my elevation as I work through. Keep in mind that the higher you keep your elevation as you're moving through, the more hair you're removing and the more layering that you're putting in. So if the client has really thick hair and I want to remove a lot, then I'll keep my elevation higher for longer. But her hair is about medium texture, medium density, excuse me. So I'm just dropping down my elevation as I move through and just coming in with my razor, creating that really soft, airy feel. And I'm already getting that really beautiful, short to long feel as I work through the nape. And I'm just gonna do that with two more sections here. You can do it in one section. You can take everything from that back center nape and bring it all forward and do one cut if you're more comfortable with that. I prefer control, so I am taking more vertical sections. And the more sections that you take, you're actually creating more texture, right? And we want that really beautiful, lived-in, airy texture of the modern shag. So I am taking more sections. So what I'm doing is I'm just finishing up this style with some avant-garde. Remember, this is going to be the heat protection and also shine and finishing spray. So I'm just going to set these front areas exactly where I want them. Spray it in the direction that you want the hair to flow. And I feel like that's look number one. I love oh my God, she's so beautiful. Just know too, you could do a curling iron, there's a flat iron, there's a lot of different ways you could do it. But I just wanted to show something that kind of I like. And I think something that really hasn't been showcased with this haircut because I see a lot of people using flat irons and curling irons, which is pretty straight, you know, straightforward. So just know like there's other tools out there to kind of get you a really nice finish in this haircut. And I just love all the kicks and flips and like all the, you know, the, the volume. So I'm just repeating on the opposite side. I've kept her natural part, which is in the center. I'm taking everything straight forward with my vertical subsections using the center of my fringe as my guide for entry. And coming in with my razor, creating that really beautiful airy texture, dropping my elevation to my perimeter length. Now, I did not create a perimeter before I did, um, did anything to her haircut. I think, you know, old school, create the perimeter first and then go back in and create the layers. But I feel like with the modern shag, because it's supposed to be that very, like, up and down and flicks and kicks. I don't want like a really strong perimeter and then all this airiness on the top. If you're disciplined with your hair cutting and you're really deliberate about where your exit point is with your razor or your shear, you're going to know exactly where you're creating that perimeter because as I drop, my ending point is my new perimeter. And then after I've created all of these foundational layers, then I can go back and clean it up if I choose to, but I haven't put like that really strong line in that I now have to break up wanting that texture and airiness. So that's just a little tip for you behind the chair that will also help you save time when you're working behind the chair. Yeah, then I wanna transition this into something else, Don. I really love right now like a lot of volume through here. Like Don said, I'm extra and I just like things to be crazy. So I'm gonna show you guys a way to kind of get like this really nice volume here and kind of like do like a little accessory um, bobby pin right here. So it can still look really cute. But I wanna show you guys the versatility of this um, haircut because you still could have a lot of the hair down in the front. We could change it up and just kind of get some volume in the back. So the one big pro tip for this is I always struggle with having the bobby pins stay where I need them on a style like this, right? So if you're just bobby, pin, bobby pinning right here, they tend to not be too strong and they tend to like slip out. So what I like to do is I like to find the point where I'm gonna pin, so I'll probably right by the occipital. I'm gonna go in there and create like a little teasing base, right? Just like a little packing right there so all my bobby pins could like grab right on, right onto there. 
Do you ever struggle with that, Dom, when you're trying to like pin something and it's just not staying? Yeah. Not staying? Hi, Don. Hi, Antonio. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, Stephanie Polanski, Global Director of Education. And I just want to make sure that everyone um, that's joining us today, first of all, thank you for taking the time to join us. Um, second, we are only offering this 20% off uh, code at Cosmoprof only until April 17th. Um, it is only available in the USA. Um, to you guys who are viewing this. So this is private. We aren't sharing it with anyone. It's our thank you for you guys um, who are joining us today and empowering your education. You can see the code uh, going through the bottom. So make sure you uh, take a photo of it or write it down. You just need to use this code at checkout. Either um, you can use Ecom or you can also uh, go into the store and use the code. So we're gonna keep this running for about five minutes so you guys have time to get that code down because this is a great opportunity and a great great way to try Artistry Pro um, with an incredible discount, but the discount is off of um, just the Artistry Pro line at this time. So thank you guys. Thanks, Steph. So now I've created her, so far, this is her foundation of her modern shad. You can see those really beautiful layers, short to long, based on her curtain fringe through the nape, okay? Now I'm dropping down the crown. And the crown is where you really decide, like, what do I want to see on the surface of my modern shag? I've seen them all, right, Antonio? Like, we've seen them where they're much longer and swooping down. Um, we've seen them where they're really, really short through the top and enhanced through the curtain fringe. So this is where you and your client have that conversation about, like, how much texture and layers do you want to see on the surface? One thing to keep in mind, though, is that when you start creating your surface layers, you want your exit point, and I'll just show you guys as I'm working through the section, you want your exit point of your layers to be very close to your end result of your perimeter that you created in the back with your foundation of your shag. The reason being is that you don't want to have like this like circular poof on the top and then all of a sudden this big drop off to the to the nape area. So I'm going to show you how you can get those really fun short airy texture layers to the top while you're still blending down to the nape. We're not going to cut any of the hair that we've cut below. It's already cut. It's already done. We do want it to have a little bit of variation in the surface layer. So we're not doing that perfect blendy blend, right? We're coming to a nice fine taper. So I'm using the top of the section above. So see here, I have just from the very top of the head shape. And so those were all directed forward and now I'm directing them back. So the great thing is that yes, they blend to all the layers in the front and now they're gonna blend perfectly to all the layers in the back. Depending on the density is how much I elevate the hair. So she's got a lot of hair to remove. I'll start way up here, right? If we want to be a little bit more conservative with finer, thinner hair, then I'm going to lower that elevation. But regardless, I'm still using the hair from the top as her guide for entry. And then coming in with my razor, short to long, letting that hair feed through and coming to a very, very fine taper. And you'll see that that fine taper is just above my perimeter links. So and I have these fun short layers that blend all the way down, laying over the foundation of her shag. And I'll do that with all four of my sections. I took that crown down and subdivided into four radial partings. So I'll do that with all four of my sections, holding them out straight out from the head shape where they live. Yeah, then what I'm doing is I'm just bobby pinning this, um, these pieces in. As you guys can see, I'm getting a lot of volume. And I really like this. And remember, I'm thinking more wearable, like something that you know a client would like to wear, not really thinking um, too avant-garde. So it's just really, really soft and pretty and something that like an everyday woman would like. I like to use some kind of bobby pin that's different than just like your regular style, your regular bobby pin. So I'm using the pink pewter um, bobby pins that are really strong and they like have like a gold kind of finish to them. So I think that just like makes it look really nice and kind of adds something to the look. But just don't forget that teasing at that base right where you're going to pin is really important because it's going to keep your bobby pins held right there. So I'm going to add a few. Antonio, someone had asked um, what comb you were using earlier. Oh, yeah. So I'm using the Pink Peter comb right here. I love this comb. It's called the Never Let Go comb. I use this for all my styling, for all like highlighting and all that stuff. 
This comb is really, really good. So yeah, pinkpewter.com is where I got this comb. Okay, you guys, so now I've created those surface layers. So you can see that I have shortness up here through the crown. And then as I let that hair feed through my fingers, ending at that fine tape or close to the perimeter, I have those really beautiful, airy, um, textured ends, but they're really soft. And you don't see like that strong line of like a, a strong layer put in. It's not like I want to layer here, here, and here. I want it to be where you can't quite tell where they start, where they end. You get those really, really beautiful flicks and kicks, and you can blend from really short all the way to really long really, really easily. And I'll show you how to do that again, just so I can show you guys one more time for those that want to try more with a sheer. I'll show you the same thing. And then the hair haircut's going to be done, guys. This is super easy to achieve in the salon. And, and then we have a question they're asking, would you finish with a uh, spray and play or something else to hold the flyaways? Actually, that's so funny you talk about that because I'm going to go in with a new little um, tip that I like to use. I'm actually going to, you could always finish with something a lot stronger if you wanted um, for that maximum hold like spray and play. But I'm actually going to go in there with a little bit of refined. This is a styling paste. And I'm just going to kind of comb all these little hairs and get them all right where I want them. But remember, you got to be really careful with this. You don't want to use too much. This is a really versatile product. You can use it for braiding, men's hair, um, short women's hair, little detail stuff like this. So I'm gonna go in just a little bit like that, okay? Really get into my hands and just kind of go right through here and just get all these little hairs to kind of come together and stay where I want them. So I see a question that says, do you take, this is from Lena, do you take just from the crown sections to blend? So when I do um, my crown area, that was the very top section within my haircut, I sub subdivide that into four radials. Depending on the thickness, you can take more radials and just took them straight out from where they live. I blended from the very top. Remember, the very top was directed forward to the fringe. And now I take from the top and blend back to the crown area. So we're only doing these because remember, like this has already been layered through the sides because we blended with our fringe, right? So we've already got those beautiful layers in the front. We just need that fun kick up with our modern shag here in the crown area. So that's what we've done with our crown. I love this too, Don, because I feel like we talked earlier about, you know, that that client or that person that can't really use a blow dryer too well, right? Yeah. Um, I feel like if you just clip those front pieces and just put some product in and let it air dry, I think you'd have a really beautiful finish, right? Look how beautiful it looks already. Yeah, just like, this is great for like, this is gonna be a perfect haircut for the summer because look at all those fun flicks and kicks. Like, especially if she had just a little bit of natural texture or curl in her hair, put a little product in. I gotta say like my favorite new product cocktail is going to be handcrafted, which handcrafted is perfect by itself as a beautiful, like shiny blowout thermal protection up to 450 degrees. It's gonna make this really beautiful shiny finish. But I like to cocktail it as well with my Sculpted. So Sculpted is our sculpting gel. And this gives me the ability to really define any texture that she may have. So you can use this as a cocktail together and scrunch in and just let it air dry. So that would be perfect for that beautiful, like textured, airy, like put a product in, let it air dry, beautiful, done, right? But I can also use this to really amp up my blowouts too because that sculpting gel is going to give me a little bit more memory when I'm doing my round brush set like I showed you on my pre-done girl. So like how cute is she already just air dry? Like I love this even side by side Antonio because here's like the really cool natural texture feel and then Antonio is like a little bit extra and I love it so much. Like, so you know, love Antonio uh -huh. that. Like when we say you're extra, it's like a compliment. It's not like, wait, what? <laughs> no, like I love it that you're extra. Like it makes it like awesome. Best of both worlds. Yeah, and really quick, I, I want to touch on something that's a little off subject about um, the gel. Um, 
sculpted. So yesterday I did a photo shoot where I wanted to do like a lot of baby hairs and this was the perfect product for that. I don't know if you've used it for that, Don, but I was able to really design some really cool designs right through here. And it was really awesome because it was just enough hold and just enough wetness that if it even lifted off the skin, the hair still stayed in that form. So just know that this is a really good product just to have in your kit for lots of things. I've even just styled my hair wet with this and got like a really wet finish. There's so many ways to use this. So just know, think outside the box, right, Don? That's what we always say. Like, yes. Yeah. Well, but what else can it be used for? What can I cocktail it with? And right now, I mean, if you're thinking about even purchasing any of these, it's like the perfect time, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm always like a rule breaker. Like even when products are designed a certain way, I'm like, hey, let's try it here and see like what happens, right? Yeah, so that's pretty much my look right here. Oh, I love it. Don, you have a really good question. Yes. Um, if you wanted the middle section of your curtain veins to be shorter, oh, it just moved up on me. Okay, here it is. <laughs> Would okay. the layers on the top be shorter? Okay, so this is actually a two part answer, and I love the question. So thank you so much for that question because it's absolutely relevant in the salon. So you could, in the beginning, when you start your curtain fringe you could make them shorter in the beginning so remember let me just comb this fringe so i can show you to remind you so when we take the fringe and we laterally direct it to the opposite side right i could take this a bit shorter from the beginning of my haircut drop my elevation to my desired end length okay and when you bring all of the layers forward remember they're based on the center of the fringe so your layers will be shorter so if you want that, great. But what I really like to do with fringes, if you're not wanting the layers to be a lot shorter, but you want the center of the fringe to be shorter, I'll do everything, right? Like I start to finish, blow out everything, because we'll find that clients sometimes they say like, oh, I want a curtain fringe. And you do it and you're like, oh, I think I want to take it shorter. And they're like, nope, we're good. I like it the way it is. But if they want it a little shorter, but they don't want the shorter layers, I'll do everything start to finish like I did. And then I'll go back through and just have some fun. I can re-wet just like the center part right here, which is nice because they, they can see all this. They can see the end result. I can re-wet just the center after we have her entire haircut and style done. And then I can really customize and open that up in the center little bits at a time. I always think it's better to be more conservative in the beginning and we can always go shorter. We just can't put it back. So great question. You can start in the beginning and then the rest of the hair layers will be short. Or if you don't want the short layers and you can do it the way I did it and then go back through and customize at the end um, for that desired end result. Great question. I think, I think it's always smart too to kind of, I'm sorry if I'm interrupting, but it's really smart, yeah. you know, I'm always thinking of the styling part, right? Like I love it. I cut in color, but I always think the style. So just knowing what that finish is going to be can tell you a lot about the length that it needs to be, right? So if someone says they, they want like a shag or like this, but they're showing you pieces that are way down here, it's like, oh, okay, you're not really wanting what you would think would be like a shag, right? So making sure that you know what the finish of the look is going to be. So pictures, stuff like that because if you're if you're getting a picture where it's really short but it's long layers back here then you know that you're gonna have to cut all this whenever you're like at the end right yeah yes. instead of like putting your guide here and then you're like oh shoot like I, now you have so much yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. always thinking about the end like what do i want at the end yeah and taking those steps to get that proper end result yeah i love that antonio yeah, i feel like that's why we're so lucky you know when i first started in the industry there was like a lot of like books where you like look for haircuts right oh, inspire like, oh. called inspire i remember oh. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're so lucky because like you could just go on your phone real quick like people are even in my chair sometimes people will say like i want bangs and i'll just look at bangs real quick and i'll be able to show them like different types and it's like oh you like those perfect you know it's so easy now so I just I'm going to jump in real quick um because i want to make sure everyone does remember to use the um code for Cosmoprof, the 20% off. I actually just got noticed that it's for all the sexy hair products. Oh so my God, that's amazing. Amazing, for on, on full price. So if they're already discounted, <laughs> you don't get a 20% oh. off. On full price products, you'll get the extra 20, you'll get the 20% off of those. I'm going on the way to work today now. I'm like, yes, that's amazing. Awesome. 
So do you guys have any more questions? This has been so fun, Antonio. I'm like, this is this is awesome that we've been able to. I love that. She's so beautiful. <laughs> I don't know why, but you're, you're just giving me like J-Lo vibes, your mannequin. Right? Kind of, yeah. yeah. J-Lo needs to be blonde now, so. Yeah. Um, well, thank you guys so much. Do you guys have any other questions? You guys definitely try out Sexy Hair's Artistry Pro if you haven't. Definitely go into Cosmoprof. Get that 20% off today through for, uh, Saturday. And, um, yeah, you guys, again, if you guys want to learn more, in, like, get more inspiration, more education, um, some great, like, product info, just to be inspired and excited, please go check out, and I'll have Stephanie drop the link below in the comments, please go check out our professional page, because we have a Facebook professional page that is for hairdressers only. It's a wonderful way to get inspired, to get some education, to learn what's new, what's, what's going on, the tips and tricks, everything sexy hair, but really, like, just what's happening in the beauty industry. Industry, right so go join us at our professional page and always on Instagram sexy hair and our landing page sexy hair on Instagram come check us out at hair artistry by Dawn and Anastrada hair on IG on Instagram and like just come chat with us if you guys have any questions afterwards you can always hit the comments below but you can always like, connect with us afterwards um, DM us. We're always here. We love to chat, don't we, Antonio? Like, All the time. Oh, <laughs> like how do we get everything in in thirty minutes? We talk so much. <laughs> yeah, guys, but, thank you so much for being with us this morning. And yeah, like Don was saying, the Sexier Facebook page is a safe place for hairstylists where you guys can just go and ask questions, all that stuff. Also, so much free education, which I think is gold right now. So go ahead and check us out. And like Don said again. My Instagram is Antistrata Hair, so I'd always love to answer any questions for you guys and just appreciate your time. Yes, thank you guys so much. Thank you behind the chair and sexy hair. You have an awesome rest of your day in the salon or wherever you guys are. So thank you guys.